Hey guys, welcome back to another cake challenge tutorial. The Brigadiers voted for their favourite theme, Fairground, and this was the mood board we are creating our pieces from. I decided to go with the Hooker Duck and made it an interactive cake, so let's jump straight in. First I'm going to make my ganache and I'm making white chocolate ganache, which I always use a ratio of 3 parts chocolate to 1 part cream. My tub of cream measured 254 grams, so I'm going to times that by 3, which means I need 762 grams of white chocolate. Now, as you can see, I'm dumping it in and it goes a little over, closer to 858 grams, but you don't really need to be exact with ganache. It will just set a tad bit firmer. I'm then just popping it in the microwave for almost a minute and a half and then giving it a stir before popping it back in for another minute. You can see it's just starting to melt and it's better to keep stirring it while the mixture is warm to try and get rid of those lumps rather than putting it back in the microwave and overheating it. So just be patient and keep stirring until those lumps have gone. Once it's fully smooth I'm adding some red food colouring. This is actually water based airbrush colour and I get asked a lot whether you can use gels and water based in ganache and the answer is yes because we're already mixing the chocolate with a liquid cream. The only time you would need an oil based colour is if you were colouring chocolate on its own not ganache. So I'm just aiming for a nice deep red colour, you can see the airbrush colour does a good job. Now I'm going to place a piece of greaseproof paper over one of my acrylic working boards to create a flat surface. I'm just going to cut it down so we don't have all that excess paper in our way. You then want to place some of your ganache into the centre and smooth out a nice chunky slab a little bit bigger than your cake. We are making a 7 inch cake and you just want to make sure the ganache is sticking out from the edge all the way around. Then we're going to go in with our filling. And because I wanted a retro fairground, I went with a bit of a retro flavour. I made rhubarb and custard. This is rhubarb and ginger jam. The sponge has a soft spice flavour and the buttercream I'm going to be adding is custard flavoured. You just want to smooth that lip of ganache that's sticking out before it sets so we aren't left with a hard layer on the bottom. You just want to push it up the sides and smooth it out. Then we're adding in our custard buttercream and putting our final layer of cake on top. You're then going to cover the whole thing in your ganache, just crumb coating it and it doesn't have to be neat, you just want to seal all that sponge inside. Let that set a little before adding your second layer, which means your cake will be a bit sturdier now. Once you have your second layer on, you want to take your profroster and I'm just moving the arm down until it's closer to the top of the cake and scraping all the excess from the sides. This tool comes in handy for giving you good straight sides and a straight flat top. You just want to keep going, adding your ganache and scraping it off until all the little holes have been filled up and it starts to look a lot smoother. The bottom will already be nice and smooth as it's against that acrylic board. I'm just marking where I want to cut the cake and make sure you don't cut too much off. I'm just slicing down as straight as I can and removing that slice. You can keep that to one side and then eat the entire thing with a cup of tea if you like. I'm then adding some ganache to my board to stick the cake onto. You just want to flip it upside down, removing the working board and peeling off the paper. Now I didn't let my cake sit and set long enough, which is why the bottom is a little bit wet, but you can pop yours in the fridge to make sure it's fully firmed before removing the paper. As always, I'm in a rush and trying to get this done in a day. I'm just going to take my little scraper and clean up the back. Now for the interactive bit, we're using some wide bubble tea straws and you want to find some of these mini pegs, which you can get from most craft shops, and make sure that it fits easily inside the straw. You also want a couple of thin wires which we're going to hot glue onto the inside of the peg. I'm just adding a little blob to the end and then pressing it inside one of the arms of the peg and holding it until it's set. Just give it a little test to make sure it still fits inside your straw. Next we want our prizes. 
I've just knocked these up in Photoshop. You can get the ticket design online and then I just added my own text. These are great for the birthday recipient to not only have a cool interactive cake, but they also get these extra prizes. I'm a big fan of gifting experiences rather than items, so these are a good way to showcase them. I'm just going to cut the tickets out and then tightly roll them up before securing it with our peg. Again, check that it fits down inside your straw so it's easily removed when they lift the duck. Now we want to just push our ticket down into the straw to make sure we've got enough room before snipping it shorter. Now the two side straws are actually going to be at an angle in our cake, so you want to cut them a little shorter. You can see we've got our centre straw and then the two side ones. Just making sure that they're still long enough to hide the prize. Now place one of your wires down into the straw and bend it to the right. This will make sure that your prize doesn't go further down the straw and it will also hold our duck. We're going to bend the wire back on itself to create this little ledge and then you can squeeze it neater with a pair of pliers. You then want to bend the wire straight back up. For our duck's body, we're going to roll a fat teardrop shape and then curl that little point up into a curly tail for the duck. You want to thread that wire up towards the front of the teardrop where the head is going to go and slide it down, embedding that straight bit up into the body. Now, I stupidly held this too high so you can't see it, but I've just pushed the wire up into the body and pinched the seams closed. So now our duck body is sitting on that straight piece of wire. The head is just a round ball and again it's threaded down the wire so that it sits near the front of the body. I've just bent the top of the wire then to create a hook so I can hang it from my shelf until it sets. You want to make three of these. I'm adding a little bit of sugar paste down into my straw to create a plug at the bottom so no cake comes into contact with our paper. And then pushing the straw down the middle of the cake and adding one of our ducks to make sure it all works and fits. Then using some pliers, you want to bend the excess wire into a loop before cutting it down. Then you want to do the same for the side straws which go in at an angle. So now we have all our ducks in a row, we are going to decorate them with these little pointed pieces of orange sugar paste for their beaks and some small black balls for eyes. Next we're going to cover our board. Again, this is the toilet seat method. It works for lots of different shapes, as you can see. You just want to help push the paste into place and for a full in-depth look at this technique, you can always find it in the description box as well as other videos on how to make dark chocolate ganache, a longer look at the white chocolate ganache, and even my vanilla cake recipe. I'm going to score the board to look like wood with our Dresden tool, and then take a long stainless steel ruler to mark in a type of boardwalk, before finishing it off with the Dresden tool again to create individual panels. I'm then busting out the airbrush with some brown water-based colour and just deepening those lines in the wood as well as marking around the base of the cake because I want to give it an antique old look rather than a more modern hooker duck.
I then rolled out this cream strip of sugar paste and I'm just dampening a line across the front where I want my first piece of ribbon to go. I'm sticking it down before bending it back on itself and dampening another path across the bottom. It always pays to cut your ribbon a bit bigger than you need it because you can always cut it down once it's on. Whilst I'm doing this, don't forget to stick around to the end of the tutorial to vote for your favourite Brigadier's fairground piece. For the lettering, I've just traced them out onto a piece of greaseproof paper. You can find lots of different fonts online and my favourite website is dafont.com which I'll leave linked below. And I'm just tracing around the letter with my Dresden tool to make an impression and then following that impression with my scalpel to cut them out. You want to add a little bit of Tylo powder to your sugar paste and this is going to make it easier to cut. I've placed my letters onto an acrylic board whilst I just airbrush the bottoms of the letters with a darker blue to give an ombre effect. I'll leave them to dry and then stick them to the ribbon with water. I've also cut out an A in yellow which is slightly larger and I'm backing it onto some blue paste and cutting a frame around it. As I want this to stick out a little bit, I'm first adding a blob of blue paste to the cake as a little platform and then sticking the A to it to give it a little bit of dimension. And then finishing it off with some yellow stars and yet more airbrushing to make it look like an old fairground. Everything I use will be linked in the description box below. And that's it, this cake is made in red ganache rather than sugar paste with just some sugar paste elements. And if you want to get right into it you could even make your own little hook. I'm just using a kebab stick to demonstrate but you just want to hook a duck, lift it up and then remove your prize. You could of course exchange the prize for bank notes if you prefer, whichever you think the recipient would like the best. Coming up are all the Brigadier's amazing fairground entries. I'll show you the inspiration board one more time and then vote for your favourite in the comments below. If you want to join us for the next challenge, we are currently voting for our theme and the link to the Brigade is always in the description box. Thanks guys, see you next week.